So, if we're talking about communications, I have a question for you. What is the fastest and the most reliable way to communicate a piece of information to many different people at the same time? I cannot think about anything which works better than gossiping. <laughs> Gossiping is a great thing, and before it became only talking and rumoring around rock stars, it actually worked in a very positive way. It was the way to communicate information between people, important information. So if we have, for example, two villages where people start talking to each other, it depends a lot on the piece of information, on the news itself, to see how it actually goes around and how many people will be informed. So, for example, if there is a fight between two neighbors, that's not that exciting story, so maybe the neighbors around will also know something, but it will die out pretty quickly. If we have a birth of a child, this is something which everybody is interested in because it's something positive, it gives you hope in the world. So it is something which will propagate much faster. If we have a new law, this is very, you know, it's boring. Uh, so it could be that it will stay only around the municipality and maybe goes maybe to the governor's house and that's it. However, if we have the first coffee shop in town, everybody will be very excited. So what happens is that almost everybody will know about this coffee shop. However, there is also one problem with this system which people didn't like, especially the guys who were went out and who were left, left out of the story. So now in our digital era, where everybody is connected to each other and we have all these amazing gadgets and devices and infrastructures, people started, of course, thinking of ways how to combine those and how to make it more reliable, how to make everybody informed of everyone, of, of everything. So what happened is that we built these very complex systems which are getting information from all over the world into one single place, somewhere which are calling typically a database or a server or whatever. We're gathering all this information there and then trying to make use of this data there. Some people are talking about big data, some people are talking about a big mess. So, what is happening here actually is that we lost on the way lots of properties, lots of really good properties. We lost this natural, real-time locality of when we actually talk to each other, when we're in the same or a very similar situation with our neighbors, our physical neighbors, where we actually can exchange information which is important for both of us. We also lost, or we actually got into a new trouble, which is scalability. What is that? Well, it's just too much, the data which we have, and we have no clue what to do with that. Still, people, researchers all over the world, are hoping for the, hope, for the holy grail to actually get it to work and to have this huge amount of data somehow processed and somehow in a useful way to present to people. But we're not yet there. Also, which disturbs me a lot, actually, is that all of these systems are kind of assuming that you have to know what you're interested in before you know what is out there. You have to put a request for knowing coffee shops, and you have to decide for coffee shops, and you have to decide against restaurants. This is something which I really don't like, because you don't know what is out there, and before knowing out what is there, you also cannot know whether you're interested in that thing or not. So what we are doing at the University of Bremen is that we're trying actually to solve these problems by going back to our original way of communicating, to the gossiping. How can we do that? Well, what we're doing is that we're bringing back the locality, in the way that we're letting all people, or all devices actually, which are, for example, in this hall here, to talk directly to each other instead of being slaves to some kind of infrastructure or part of a bigger system. So we'd like to give to the individual devices, which you, I'm sure everybody holds at least one in their hands right now, that we will try actually to give some empowerment to those devices so they become independent of the infrastructure, they become 
they, they become self-sustainable devices which can actually talk to each other directly and be useful to all of us. So what we're doing is that we're taking these devices and we're trying to empower them. We're giving them eyes. We're giving them the possibility to see who out is there, who are my neighbors. We have cameras on the smartphones. We have microphones, we have all possible sensors which you probably don't even know that they're on board of your, of your devices. So all the, if we gather this possibility, if we gather those sensors, they're like eyes to our devices. We are all, actually, we're also giving it a feeling of our guts. How am I today? How can I use my resources from the perspective of the device itself how can I use it so that I don't exhaust myself completely? I'm not a slave of a system or of a bigger infrastructure. I do exactly what is good for me and for my user. We're also giving it a huge brain. We are giving it the possibility to see the information which is flowing around and to make an intelligent decision about how, which information is useful for us which is not which one should we show to our user and which we should hide from, the, from him or from her. And we're also giving it a hand. Now it looks like a monster. Uh, we're giving it also hands. We're giving it the possibility to actually do something in this environment. To switch on the light, to ask somebody for help, to send a message by itself. So how does that work? How, what is the idea here, for example, for this brain? How does it work? How can we learn what piece of information is important and what is not? Let us see some example. If we have many different small tiny data items, which for the device right now look exactly the same. So may, they have maybe different colors, but they're actually the same things. They, there's no difference. Once they meet each other, the guy who has some piece of information can say, hey, I have something new for you. I have no clue whether you'll be interested in this piece of information or not, but I'll give it to you and let's see what happens. This one can then answer and say, oh, this is interesting. This is what my user typically loves because it's about coffee shops. Everything which is about coffee shops, he stamps with, always with a star and it's very great. So it says it's very interesting and this gives us the possibility to reevaluate this data item and to say, wow, this seems to be of a bigger importance. Next time when I, need, when I see another device or another user, I will propagate this piece of information with a higher probability, or rather I propagate that one than another one, because it seemed to be interesting to another user. And this is exactly coming back to our gossiping environment, where people were talking about stuff, and from this talk they either propagated it further, or they just stopped, stopped talking about it because everybody was reacting like, who cares about the new law? It's not interesting. So exactly here, the same happens. If I tell you that, oh, old stuff, I'm not interested in that at all, my user long ago knows about that, then this piece of information is not interesting at all. So what are the possibilities to actually use this system in real applications? What, what we're talking about here? There is a very beautiful natural reserve in South America, close to the city of Barranquilla in Colombia. It's a beautiful one. It is one of the few rainforests left on Earth, and it's really important that we keep it as it is. There is, however, one small, I will not call it a problem, but there is some, something which disturbs the people in the city, which are the regular fires in the natural reserve. They're absolutely natural. They're not done by humans, and they die out absolutely natural because they're in a rainforest, so it's not very actually problematic. They should be there. We don't want to stop them because they're part of this natural reserve. However, if you look into the second picture, you see where the problem is. It is just on one side of a river. On the other side, there is the city. And all of this smoke, always by bad luck, goes directly onto the city. This happens very often, and it's a big problem for the residents of this city, which suffer a lot, who suffer a lot from the smoke because of eye problems and breathing problems. So we don't want to change the system. We just want to warn people where the smoke will be, 
so that they can either go away or wear a mask or stay at home and it goes in a couple of hours, it is, uh, everything is over and everybody is, can get out again. So what we're, for example, using our system, our gossiping system, is exactly to use all of the devices of the people who can make pictures of the air. They can also make pictures of the forest fires themselves. We can also use some sensors to see where the forest fires are. And we can make, from, the, from combining all this information through gossiping, we can actually make a prediction about where this smoke will go in the next couple of hours. And this is something which is an absolutely free, free application, free service for everybody. It works without infrastructures, it works, that's why, also without any costs, and it works for all devices which you can ever carry in your, in your pocket. Another, unfortunately, a little bit sadder application of the system, but I think it is extremely important, is actually an alternative to our normal infrastructure, to our normal communication infrastructure. If we think again about what has happened yesterday in Paris, I get really scared when I think what could happen if somebody actually kills our communication infrastructure. We need an alternative. We need the possibility to talk to each other without satellites, without the huge infrastructure which is around us. You know how it feels probably when you don't have access to the infrastructure, when you don't have coverage. You kind of feel panic, right? You cannot connect your family. You cannot say whether you arrived safely somewhere. And just imagine what will happen if that for some reason falls out completely. So our system also gives a possibility, offers an alternative to infrastructure communications and gives a possibility for disaster management and for all possible applications which simply work without costs and without infrastructures. So watch out for our applications and thank you very much.